Hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on cryptocurrency, full nodes. Full nodes are nodes that maintain a full blockchain with all transactions more accurately. They probably should be called full blockchain nodes in the early years of Bitcoin. All nodes were full nodes and currently the Bitcoin core client is a full blockchain node. In the past two years, however, new forms of Bitcoin clients have been introduced that do not maintain a full blockchain but run as uh, lightweight clients. We'll examine these in more detail in the next section. Full blockchain nodes maintain a complete up-to-date copy of the Bitcoin blockchain with all the transactions which they independently build and verify starting with the very first block genesis block and building up to the latest known block in the network. A full blockchain node can independently and alternatively verify any transaction without recourse or reliance on any other node or source of information. The full blockchain node relies on the network to receive updates about the new blocks of transactions which it then verifies and incorporates into its local copy of the blockchain. Running a full blockchain node gives you the pure Bitcoin experience independent verification of all transactions without the need to rely on or trust any other systems. It's easy to tell if you are running a full node because it requires more than 100 gigabytes of persistent storage disk space to store the full blockchain. If you need a lot of disk and it takes two or three days to sync the network, you're running a full node. This is the price of complete independence and freedom from central authority. There are a few alternative implementations of full blockchain Bitcoin clients built using different programming languages and software architectures. However, the most common implementation is the reference client Bitcoin Core, also known as the Satoshi client. More than 75% of the nodes on the Bitcoin network run various versions of Bitcoin Core. It is identified as Satoshi in the subversion string sent in the version message as shown by the command get peer info as we saw earlier for example satoshi um eight dot sorry satoshi zero dot eight dot six exchanging inventory the first thing a full node will do once it connects to peers is try to construct a complete blockchain if it is a brand new node and has no blockchain at all, it only knows one block, the Genesis block, which is statistically embedded in the client software. Starting with block zero, the Genesis block, the new node will have to download hundreds of thousands of blocks to synchronize with the network and re-establish the full blockchain. The process of syncing the blockchain starts with the version message because that contains best height, the node's current blockchain height, number of blocks, and node will see the version messages from its peers, know how many blocks they each have and be able to compare how many blocks it has in its own blockchain. Peer nodes will exchange a get blocks message that contains the hash fingerprint of the top of the block on their local blockchain. One of the peers will be able to identify the received hash as belonging to a block that it that is not at the top but rather belongs to an older block, thus deducing that its own local blockchain is longer than its peers. The peer that has the longer blockchain has more blocks than the other node and can identify which blocks the other node needs in order to catch up. It will identify the first 
500 blocks to share and transmit their hashes using an INV inventory message. The node missing these blocks will then retrieve them by issuing a series of get data messages requesting the full block data and identifying the requested blocks using the hashes from the INV message. Let's assume for example that the node sorry let's assume for example that a node only has the genesis block it will then receive an INV message from its peers containing the hashes of the next 500 blocks in the chain. It will start requesting blocks from all its connected peers spreading the load and ensuring that it doesn't overwhelm any peer with requests. The node keeps track of how many blocks are in transit per peer connection meaning blocks that it has requested but not received checking that it does not exceed a limit max blocks in a transit per peer. This way if it needs a lot of blocks it will only request new ones as previous requests are fulfilled allowing the peers to control the pace of updates and not overwhelm the network. As each block is received it is added to the blockchain as the local blockchain it is gradually built up more blocks are requested and received and the process continues until the node catches up to the rest of the network. Um, this process of comparing the local blockchain with the peers and retrieving any missing blocks happens at any time the node goes offline for any period of time. Whether a node has been offline for a few minutes and is missing a few blocks or a month and is missing a few thousand blocks, it starts by sending get blocks, get an INV response and starts downloading the missing blocks. Figure 86 shows the inventory and block propagation protocol. Um, simplified payment verification SPV nodes. Not all nodes have the ability to store the full blockchain. Many Bitcoin clients are designed to run on space and power constrained devices such as smartphones tablets or embedded systems. For such devices a simplified payment verification SPV method is used to allow them to operate without storing the full blockchain. These types of clients are called SPV clients or lightweight clients as Bitcoin option surges. The SPV node is becoming the most common form of Bitcoin node especially for Bitcoin wallets. SPV nodes download only the block headers and do not download the transactions included in each block. The resulting chain of blocks without transactions is 1000 times smaller than the full blockchain. SPV nodes cannot construct a full picture of all the UTXOs that are available for spending because they do not know about all the transactions on the network. SPV nodes verify transactions using a slightly different methodology that relies on peers to provide partial views of relevant parts of the blockchain on demand. As an analogy, a full node is like a tourist in a strange city, equipped with a detailed map of every street and every address. By comparison, an SPV node is like a tourist in a strange city asking random strangers for turn-by-turn -turn directions while knowing only the main avenue. Although both tourists can verify the existence of a street by visiting it, the tourist without a map doesn't know what lies down any of the side streets and doesn't know what other streets exist. Positioned in front of 23 Church Street, the tourists without a map cannot know if there are a dozen other 23 Church Street addresses in the city 
or whether this is the right one. The mapless tourist's best chance is to ask enough people and hope some of them are not trying to mug him. SPV verifies transactions by reference to their depth in the blockchain instead of their height, whereas a full blockchain node will construct a fully verified chain of thousands of blocks and transactions reaching down the blockchain back in time all the way to the genesis block. An SPV node will verify the chain of all blocks but not all transactions and link that chain to the transaction of interest. For example, when examining a transaction in block 300,000 a full node links all 300,000 blocks down to the genesis block and builds a full database of UTXO establishing the, vadil, the validity of the transaction by confirming that the UTXO remains unspent. An SPV node cannot validate whether the UTXO is unspent instead. The SPV node will establish a link between the transaction and the block that contains it using a Merkle path then the SPV node waits until it sees the six blocks 300,001 through to 3,306 piled up on top of the block containing the transaction and verifies it by establishing its depth block under 300,006 to 300,001. The fact that the other nodes on the network accepted block 300,000 and then did the necessary work to produce six more blocks on top of it is proof by proxy that the transaction was not double spent. An SPV node cannot be persuaded that a transaction um, exists in a block when the transaction does not in fact exist. The SPV node establishes the existence of a transaction in a block by requesting a Merkle path proof by validating the proof of work in the chain of blocks. However, a transaction's existence can be hidden from an SPV node. An SPV node can definitely prove that a transaction exists but cannot verify that a transaction such as double spend from the UTXO doesn't exist because it doesn't have a record of all transactions. This vulnerability can use can be used in a denial of service attack or for a double spending attack against SPV nodes. To defend against this, an SPV node needs to connect randomly to several nodes to increase the possibility that it is in contact with at least one honest node. This need to randomly connect means that SPV nodes are also vulnerable to network partitioning attacks or civil attacks. Where they are connected to fake nodes or fake networks and do not have access to honest nodes or the real Bitcoin network for most practical purposes. Well connected SPV nodes are secure enough striking the balance between resource nodes particularly and security. For infallible security however nothing beats running a full blockchain node to get the block headers SPV nodes use a get header message instead of get blocks. The responding peer will send up to two hundred thousand sorry up to two thousand block headers using a single header message. The process is otherwise the same as that used by a full node to retrieve full blocks. SPV nodes are also set to filter on the connection to peers to filter the stream of future blocks and transactions sent by the peers. Any transactions of interest are retrieved using the get data request. The peers generate a TX message containing the transactions in response. Figure 8.7 shows the synchronization of block headers. Because 
SPV nodes need to retrieve specific transactions in order to secretly verify them. They also create a privacy risk, unlike full blockchain nodes which collect all transactions within each block. The SPV nodes request for specific data can in inadvertently reveal the addresses in their wallet. For example, a third party monitoring a network could keep track of all the transactions requested by a wallet on an SPV node and use those to associate Bitcoin addresses with the user of the wallet, destroying the user's privacy. Um, shortly after introducing, sorry, shortly after the introduction of SPV lightweight nodes, Bitcoin developers added a feature called Bloom filters to address the privacy risks of SPV nodes. Bloom filters allow SPV nodes to receive a subset of the transactions without revealing precisely which addresses they are interested in through a filtering mechanism that uses probabilities rather than fixed patterns. So here is um, a picture, figure 87 SPV node synchronization, synchronizing the block headers. So um, I'm going to it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.